Camera Raw editing and smart objects are finally available in Photoshop on the iPad. Join me to find out more about these and all the other new features of the 2022 release. The feature I'm most excited about in Photoshop on the iPad is the fact that we can finally now use and also create smart objects. These are the special layers that can retain their original resolution from the moment that they are created. And for Photoshop Cloud documents that are created on the desktop already using smart object, they will now show up here on the iPad as well as smart objects. And you can see the little icon next to the thumbnails both in this view and also in the more detailed view of the layers. While selecting this balloon layer, which is also a smart object, I can use the transform tool and easily resize it, move it around, and I don't have to worry about losing the resolution, even if I make it much smaller, accept these changes, and then go back again and resize it, because it will retain the original resolution. If I want to turn any layer like this cloud here into a smart object, all I have to do is to bring up the layer properties and choose convert to smart object. Or if you are using the other layer view, you can also just tap on the thumbnail icon and from the additional settings, you will find convert to smart object. Remember that you won't be able to directly edit or draw onto these smart object layers. So if you ever wish to rasterize it back or convert it to a normal layer, what you will need to do is to tap on it again and choose convert to layers or flatten layer. Now, even though it is great that we finally have these smart objects, currently they are still limited compared to what we can do with them on the desktop version of Photoshop. And probably the biggest difference is that you can't actually access the source of smart objects on the iPad. So what you would normally do on the desktop is to double click on a thumbnail and that way the source of the smart object opens up as a separate document. Here nothing happens when you try to do that. In fact, it will just tell you that you will have to convert this to a layer if you want to make any changes to it. Another aspect of working with smart object that's currently missing is smart filters. But again, hopefully these will be added in later updates. Dodge and burn tools have been added on the iPad. So we can find these under the adjustment tools here. And whenever you select either of these, you will also get additional options. Like on the desktop, you can decide the range in which you want to use them. You also have the pressure option for using the Apple Pencil. And you also have the additional option to protect tones. So for instance, here I'm going to select the forest layer and using the dodge tool, I will be able to brighten up some of these details on the trees and then switching to the burn tool, I will be able to darken some of these other trees in the background. Remember that these changes are directly applied onto the image layer, so they are in a way destructive. However, you can also use the same non-destructive method with these tools, which we are used to on the desktop. And all you have to do for that is to create an additional new layer, then use the paint bucket tool. Make sure you have a 50% gray color selected. And with that, tap anywhere on the screen. You can also put this layer on top of everything else. And then from the layer properties, you can either use overlay or soft light. Both of these will work. And now if I use either the burn or dodge tools, we will be able to make these changes on a separate layer. So if I make these trees darker on this side, you can see that all this happened on that separate layer, which I can easily turn on and off. And this keeps these changes completely non-destructive. Now you can also import camera raw files into Photoshop on the iPad. So I'm just going to go to my photos and from the albums, I have a raw image, which I exported from Lightroom together with all the changes that I've done there already. And you can see that we get a very familiar Adobe Camera Raw interface here on the iPad. We have all the options on the right to make changes. I can even reset the photo to the original capture and then go back into the settings and maybe increase the shadows, decrease highlights, maybe add a little bit more contrast. And then we can go even into things like effects, increase dehaze, clarity, and then even go into color 
increased vibrance, and so on and so forth. But most importantly, remember that thanks to the fact that we are working with a raw image, we have a much wider tonal range to work with. So we will be able to recover a lot of details in the brightest and darkest parts of our images. It's important to mention that at the end, once you are ready with the changes in camera rule, you will be able to choose whether you want to import the image as a simple layer or as a smart object. Let's see what happens if we choose smart object. This at the moment only gives us the advantage of not losing any quality when we are resizing this layer. However, if the same Photoshop cloud document is opened on the desktop, you will also be able to access the original image in the source of this smart object. An all-time favorite tool has been also added to Photoshop on the iPad, and this is the magic wand, which you will find under the selection tools. So here we can choose magic wand, and it's going to work very similarly to what we are used to on the desktop. So by clicking anywhere on the image, it will find similar colors, and we can see that it will find a range of colors nearby. However, we can change the behavior, and instead of being limited to contiguous or neighboring colors, once we take that off and maybe click on the sleeves here, you will see that it will be able to pick up similar colors on the other side without the two sides being connected. It's worth mentioning that by default, this tool is using a point sample, but you can increase the sample size. I actually prefer the five by five average with which if I click anywhere here, it will be able to pick up more details. And of course, if I hold down the touch shortcut, I can click on additional areas to add to the selection, or you can also choose from these icons here on the left. And the second one is the one that will be able to keep on adding to your selection. And another useful option is the tolerance with which you can increase the amount of colors included. So if I deselect this and I click only once, you can see it pretty much managed to select everything. However, it also started to include details from the face, the hands and the lips. So be careful with the tolerance. It's usually best kept lower if you want to be precise. But to be honest, I very rarely resort to using the magic wand tool anymore because there's just so many amazing AI assisted selection methods like remove background, select subject, object selection tool, which all makes creating selections so much easier even when you have isolated subjects like this one. Don't forget that with this icon here, you can share your Photoshop Cloud documents and invite collaborators or reviewers to give feedback. And all of this feedback is going to show up here on the comments section, where you will be able to respond to these and also mark some of them as being resolved. And last but not least on the home screen, you will also see the addition of teams and spaces. This is a brilliant new feature. And if you want to find out more about it, I highly recommend to check out my other video about Photoshop 2022 on the desktop. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.